In the dark future of cyberpunk, advances in medicine and robotics have led to the ability to become something more than human, to become augmented, faster and stronger. More and more people have become augmented than ever before. Everyone from soldiers to construction workers, prostitutes to CEOs. Indeed, you'll often be hard pressed to find someone who hasn't had at least a little work done. How's it hanging dudes? My name is Sean and welcome back to another Cyberpunk 2077 video. So cyber augmentations is a blanket term uh, to kind of describe like all cyberware under one umbrella of body modification technology. There are different types of groups of augmentations and within those types are more detailed and specific cyberware implants. From within those specific types of cyberware, you have uh, fashionware, which is different from neuroware, which is also different from body implants, and so on and so forth. So suffice to say that we have a lot to get through. I would also say that we can and should categorize these modifications within their designated groups to better explain, understand, and appreciate the sheer grand scale of what we are seeing on screen right here. Everything from a simple set of cyber eyes for 2020 vision to a customized data jack and well even sexual implants, yes those exist and I'll let you use your own imagination for that one, uh, just, just the sheer amount, the massive enormity of what we have before us seems daunting, but it will make for a good decent video guide, right? So I would like to start a brand new cyberpunk series. Today will be the first video of a host of detailed explanations still to come and also breaking down and explaining what we have on screen and how to make sense of it all. This guide and its future completion, its entirety, will be mainly for introducing newcomers much like myself and also to create a mecca of easy to understand information and refresh any 2020 tabletop players, uh, you know, via a video format, something that they can actually watch instead of having to flip through the book constantly. Once the console game is launched, we will revisit the series and see what is new or changed from CTPR and what actually got carried over as far as these implants go. For future installments of the series, we will be focusing on various groups and augmentations that will be offered at some point in the game, potentially and hopefully, and many of us uh, will be utilizing some of these augmentations within the console game of 2077 itself. Hopefully with your help uh, in the comments, this will become a coherent guide that you can use for your 2020 and 2077 gameplay. Before we get any further, you should know that I am stressing again that this is primarily a tabletop guide for 2020 and speculative uh, unless already confirmed for 2077 like Mantis Blades. They'll be covered and they're in both games, right? And there are many of these implants and augmentations that may not make it into Cyberpunk 2077 and or they may be advanced, changed in a multitude of ways, including the names and abilities. On the other hand, there may be more in the game that we have yet to even fathom seeing at, as tech has advanced in between the years of 2020 and 2077. Also, the descriptions and names are our primary focus and you should ignore things like cost, uh, you know, at, as each ripper doc varies and this doesn't translate to the console game really in any way. This first video may be lengthy, but subsequent installments shouldn't be too long as we will try to cover as many implants as possible in depth as well. Also by the end of the video I would like to know your thoughts on how I did and if I can get better in any way please let me know in the comments and if you dislike I genuinely want to know why I'm not afraid you know to issue corrections like um, like this is about the, the game requirements you know what it would take to run the game and I think there was some misinformation there even if 90% of it is accurate it's gone now you know what I mean like I'm I try to do as good as I can not misleading anybody I don't want to mislead in any way and I will correct immediately so by the end if I have earned your like and sub that would literally be awesome and I would also be looking for any ideas on which group of augmentations I should cover in the next upload to the series right so I mean I guess we should start with what is cyberware Cyberware is any cybernetic technology permanently grafted to the human body, especially technology that interfaces with the human nervous system. All cyberware is artificial. Biological enhancements are considered a separate category, collectively referred to as bioware. Cyberware generally refers to technology that interacts with or acts in place of the human nervous system. Your grandmother with the artificial hip joint is not generally considered a cyborg, even though part of her body is artificial. Cyberware is commonplace in the cyberpunk world 
it is a post-human society where your meat body is little more than a tool to enhance your functionality or appearance. Cyber fashion, sometimes referred to as fashion wear, is its own thing in the cyberpunk world, enhancing your body for no other reason than just looks. Besides status, cybernetics are most often desired for practical applications. For most people, the main concern with cybernetics is simply being able to afford it. While cybernetics are still expensive, they are affordable by most of the middle class to some degree, and even by the poor in some situations. The working class, especially professionals, often have two or three implants of some kind. Cyber optics are useful for recording meetings. Cyber audio with boosted sensitivity could be useful for eavesdropping on gossip in, you know, executive lounge or something like that. While uh, in the world of cyberpunk is much more violent society, there are plenty of non-violent everyday uses for cybernetics that make them desirable to almost everyone. In the tabletop game, there are a multitude of augmentations that you will waste your eddies on and have no real impact or practical use for advancing the, score, the story itself. This causes a strategy of trial and error uh, for what is needed and what is wanted, right? A supply and demand of what will progress you through the story and what will hold you back, taking up you know vital um, room for your augmentations on what you can afford. Installing cyber technology is generally considered a major purchase, like buying a laptop or a TV or a car, but is within the means of most people. But that is not the only concern. Cyberpsychosis is actually a major problem. The more technology you pack onto your body, the more likely you are to lose touch with your humanity and go crazy. Cyberpsychosis is its own thing and you won't actually be able to be go full cyberpsycho in the story itself. But anyways, I digress. So, getting wired. Cyber technology can be acquired almost anywhere. Some installations are trivial and can be done with a walk-in visit. There are many chain stores that can perform these body shop, you know, fashion fusion parts and programs, these types of stores. These shops can also upgrade, repair, or tune existing cyberware. Other installations will require an actual hospital and involve recovery time. As in the real world, the quality will depend on what you're willing to spend. Mall stores are considered middle of the road. Specialists clinics can deliver much higher quality installations and for the the desperate or the criminals there are the ripper docs ripper docs are underground med techs that can perform installations cheaply but will you get what you pay for ripper docs do not allow the medical codes or procedures of the mall stores or clinics or hospitals and this can lead to complications or additional pain or both ripper docs can also be used uh, by the underworld for installing cyberware that is otherwise illegal. Cyberware installations involve the use of nano tech to establish an interface between the module and the nervous systems in your meat body. This is no limit to how much uh, your body can actually be replaced. Full body conversions involve replacing everything except the brain. It is difficult, some might say impossible, to avoid cyberpsychosis in such a, a situation, however. So full body conversions are still rare, and again, in 2077, you won't have the ability to go full cyber psycho, and the extent of your full body conversions will most likely not be possible for the playable protagonist named V. You should know about the history, the making of, the corporate hold of, and the marketable growth of the common usage of cyber augmentations for the mass public. This will be a future video all on its own, but for now the historical advancements for uh, the leaps in biological modifications came out of the 1990s, uh, the Central American conflict to note. The US government was able to fully test their new elite biomechanical super soldier battalion. This full-scale conflict continued for years, meanwhile uh, at Stanford Research Center in 1991 they had successfully created artificial muscle fibers which could be transplanted into anybody. Many dominant corporations tried to get in on this new market as Militech and Arasaka had a monopoly of weapons and other corporations decided to make this market their preference, such as Kiroshi Optics, um, Raven Microsystems, and Novatech are some of the most notable among many others. This tremendous market pushed the bounds of tech to unknown reaches. By 1993, Munich, Germany had finished production on the first TRC biological interface chips, kind of like the Biomon interface. By this time, closer to the end of 94, the Central American conflict has come to an end and was only one foothold solidifying corporate power as a whole. This opened up a race for technological advancements that had yet to peak in growth and still continues this day. There are many more uh, technological advancements that we can even begin to, to even think of with, with, this, um, with this whole world building aspect of cyberpunk. We will make a full timeline video one day, but for this series, 
as an introduction, this brings you up to speed so we can finally break down and hash out um, most of these cybernetic augmentation groups. Finally, we can get into the juicy meat of the video. So from what I can gather from uh, the book pages of this compilation transferred onto this PDF seems to be best and easily digested by showcasing the groups like this. So you have cyberware augmentations as a whole combined group at the top, right? And then branching down from there and in no particular order, um, you will have the following three main groupings, um, kinds, families, or types of cyberware, however you want to say it. So number one, we have fashionware. It is designed for outward appearances by and large, cosmetics ranging from radiant light emitting hair to glowing tattoos and many in between. This allows for your character to appear in any way you want if you have the eddies that is. Most fashion wear is for street cred, overall coolness, and for being who's who. The cat's pajamas of cyberwear, if you will. So neuralware is the next up and it controls virtually all implanted links and acts as a sort of neural nervous system keeping your weapons and all of the cybernetic enhancements in check. There's plenty of um, upgrades and its own implants that you can, you know, upgrade your neuralware with. Um, all kinds of different neuralware out there. Audio upgrades uh, to visual and everything in between. This is by far the most important asset of cyberware as it allows you to upgrade and access all implants. It controls everything from your pacemaker coprocessor restarting your heart to increasing uh, your control of your vehicle uh, if given the proper implants. As well as how quick you draw your weapon or um, your implanted weapons come out. I mean, this neuroware is very important. So third and last but also the largest group is body and limb enhancements. There, this is almost limitless, but not quite. All, it allows your entire body to have any host of available implants, ranging from numerous guns to the, the famous mantis blades. Fashion wear is on the surface, but what lies beneath? Maybe a suit of chrome body plating armor, or maybe a flamethrower option in your right arm that you switch out for a mechanical gun for your left. You know, then there are you know fingers and toes and feet as well. This group houses a multitude of options, and there will be. Um, time in the future to uh, go through this and it's probably going to be the bulk of the time in the series there's so much here guys like just literally saying that it's um it's implants that you can put in your limbs or your body doesn't do it justice there is so much here now keep in mind that with these three groups um they have a huge laundry list of implants that will that we will go hard in on covering in-depth detail of nearly every one of these there are also like presets and full board or uh, all body options, but I am hesitant to include that just because I'm not really for sure how much that's going to have um, to do with Cyberpunk 2077 or if that will even be an option. But for Cyberpunk 2020, uh, having a pre-made full board is very much a viable option. So any feedback on that would be uh, really appreciated. Also, make sure to let me know uh, which group we should cover first, or should we do one of you know one for each video, like one of the three groups, just include one or two. Any feedback would be great, and I can't wait to dive into each one of these with you guys. I wonder which implant is your favorite. So far, I'm kind of liking like the Mantis Blades for melee combat, but I'm sure that will change once we research the awesomeness of of these mini implants that we have yet to know hardly anything about. I hope you guys enjoyed this and. Um, found something valuable here, something informative, and if you chase chickens across the road just to see if they can actually get to the other side, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe if you're new, and until next time, piss off. Drop.